Pompeii. That's Bastille on 105.1 The Buzz. Daria Mitch and Ted Show. Daria's actually out sick. Hopefully she'll be back tomorrow. But in the meantime, we're excited to introduce a new team member to our Wednesday lineup of doctors that are ready to help you look and feel your best. Of course, everybody knows Dr. Michael Workman. Well, sure. He's Dr. a lunatic. James Chan. Yes. <laughs> They're fine, fine cosmetic <laughs> surgeons, experts in body and facial cosmetic surgery procedures. And now we welcome a brand new specialist, cosmetic dentist, Dr. Robert Stafford. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I had the pleasure of spending some time with Dr. Stafford last week in his office. Very impressive practice and uh, showed me some of the behind the scenes stuff of what goes on. Mm-hmm. And as you might imagine, Ted, I'm... Had lots of questions about <laughs> I'm sure d- you dentistry. Did. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all the different de- devices and toys and things. Explain to people and to me and to Ted what is a cosmetic dentist. I kind of thought until I met you that all dentists were basically right. cosmetic dentists, <laughs> but there's a huge difference between your qualifications, I guess, and some other dentists. Sure. Um, you know, we got to be careful when we talk about cosmetic dentists for one reason: there is no actual recognized specialty within dentistry for cosmetic dentistry. So anybody that's doing Cosmetic dentistry is really a general dentist. All right. Okay. So anybody can basically say, "Hey, I'm a cosmetic dentist," because there's no sub, you know, subspecialty like Dr. Chan or Dr. Workman sure. where they have taken a specialty training. So what happened is the uh, American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, which is the the biggest cosmetic dentistry association around, they said, "Hey, w- let's put together an accreditation program that consists of a written exam." And then some some challenging cases that guys have to present, and then we'll review those. And if they pass that, then it'll be an oral exam. And if they pass all of that stuff, then they'll be called an accredited dentist with the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. So, and you have done all of that. That because that's my interest, cosmetic dentistry. Then I went ahead and followed that track, and yeah, got done with that a couple years ago. And you're one of only five dentists in the entire state of Oregon. That's right. Yeah, there's about 400 of us in the world and five in this state. That's wow. the part. The, the 400 in the world is the part that, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. wow. That's, <laughs> and, uh, there are a lot of people in the world, so you're part of a very small little fraction. I think you told me it was more difficult for you to re- achieve this accreditation than it was to get your initial dentistry. You know, it degree. actually took longer to get the accreditation for me than it did to get my dental degree. That's right. Wow. So that's what cosmetic dentistry is. Let's talk about some of the procedures that are involved. Of course, one of the first ones that comes to my mind would be veneers. Yep. And what is a veneer? I have a basic idea. It's something you put over a tooth. Yep. Okay. That's exactly right. It's a thin shell of ceramic that can be bonded over the outside of a tooth to basically change the color or the shape in a much more conservative way than, say, a full crown would do. Okay. And is it something that... uh, Let's, is it something if you have gaps between your teeth? Is that a candidate for veneers, or is that not necessarily? Sure. Okay. Teeth that, um, any, anything that you want to change about the shape of your teeth or the color of your teeth, the proportions of your teeth, uh, and with basically a healthy tooth underneath, a veneer is a good candidate for that. Why yeah. wouldn't you, let's say you don't like the color of your teeth, why wouldn't you just go a, a bleaching route? Yeah, that can work. Because you hooked me up with a incredibly high-tech bleaching device that yeah. I just love. It's called the Glow System. Yeah, isn't that cool? Very cool. Have you tried it out I yet? I have. Have you? Careful. Have you? Careful. Shade your eyes if I, if I smile. my dark glasses out here. <laughs> because I, I told you I was uh, at adversity to bleaching. I've tried it a couple of times. I've had the trays made. But as soon as I, I've you know got the gel in there, and as soon as I feel that tinge of pain, that nerve pain, I'm done. I'm yeah, out. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to ever do it again. And with this, I'm not feeling any pain at all. Oh, that's great. And it, it, it kind of looks like a, an iPod, Ted. It's, uh, it's you, you plug it in, uh-huh. it has this blue light. So you put the gel on your teeth, and then it has this blue light. It's 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 the future. So the, Yeah, it's this techie thing that so hangs the, around your neck. The right? light activates the gel? Is that... Yeah, there's there's something about that light act in working with the gel right that okay. causes it to work and somehow keeps it from being as sensitive. Is this black magic? It's woo-woo stuff. <laughs> it certainly sounds like it. Yeah. Our Perfect. guest is cosmetic surgeon Dr. Robert Stafford. What are some of the other procedures that are involved with cosmetic dentistry? Let's say somebody's just not happy with their smile. Like cosmetic surgery, I'm just not happy with my face, but I don't know what it is I need. Could a patient walk in and say, I need something? Sure. And that's... Um, that's not that uncommon. And so what we'll do is maybe take some photos of their teeth. We can do actually computer simulations to oh, make wow. sure we're on the same page. We can look at some pictures and say, you know, because sometimes they, they're not happy. Like, just like you said, sometimes people aren't happy with their smile, but they're not the technicians. They don't know what to do to change that. What, don't even know what's available. Sure. Something doesn't look right, but I'm really not sure what it is. Well, and changing your teeth, I mean, that's that can change, change the whole shape of your mouth. Everything yeah. can change by sure. just changing up your what your sure. smile looks like. And there's the pink stuff and the white stuff. Right. You know, it's uh, it's not just teeth. It's right. the shape of the gums and all that, too. So there's a lot that goes into how the smile looks. And so sometimes it's hard for people to articulate 
exactly what it is they want to change. So they say, I just want to change my smile. That's where we start. I take some pictures and see what we come up with. It's amazing the difference it can make. We have a, a, Mitch Dari and I have a mutual friend that years ago, he um, he had smaller teeth and a lot of gum. Yep. Yeah, very gummy was, smile. Yeah, and he was very, very self-conscious about it. And so he made a point, he told us all about how he saved up and saved up and saved up, and then he went and got cosmetic dental surgery done. Sure. And they altered that uh, ratio. Where yeah. they, they gave him more of the yeah. white and less of the, of the pink, and boy, what a difference it made. Yeah. How, do you, how do you do that? Because my partner, Derek, his teeth seem to be getting smaller and smaller. He grinds his teeth, he wears a night guard, but his dentist has told him, you know, you're eventually you're not going to have any teeth. <laughs> <laughs> lengthen your teeth. How do you lengthen a tooth? That's a good question. That's a really good question, yeah. And it depends on what the problem is. You know, if they're worn off, that's one thing. Yeah. If the teeth, sometimes people's teeth never actually fully erupt. So they kind of so baby teeth forever. So there's, so there's more tooth up there under the gum than has ever erupted out. And so it's a matter of getting the gums out of the way so you can see the, the whole tooth. Sometimes it's people's, you know, I was just having this conversation today. That's interesting. <laughs> with somebody in my office and sometimes it's the way a person smiles they just lift their lip so high yeah. that it just shows all this gum instead of teeth normally you think of a really nice smile it's mostly teeth right a little bit of gums but some people when they smile it's like whoa all gums where's the teeth <laughs> and so sometimes that's when we work with somebody like dr chan maybe do a little botox in there ah. so that the so the lip won't lift so high when you smile okay. and maybe sometimes that's all it takes if the teeth the proportions are all good it's just the lip lifts too high, then something like that can actually change it. And I know so, with your procedures, just like cosmetic surgery, your goal is to make it look like nothing's happened. Somebody just has a better smile. You can't really put your finger on it. Right. As opposed to sometimes these celebrities, especially some of the older celebrities, right. it looks like they've got chiclets in their mouth. Yeah, it's like, what were you thinking? That's, that's, that just doesn't well, look realistic. Old, I mean, the old caps and stuff that they used to put on yeah. you know, can oftentimes not look the best. Yeah. yeah. But it seems like now with the veneers, it's, it's a totally different yeah, game. Yeah, the big reason for that is the old caps, what we call porcelain caps, it used to be there was a whole metal substructure under that to give it strength, and then the porcelain was fused to that. But in order to not have the metal show through, there'd be an opaque layer over the metal and then right. the porcelain on that. So they always had this kind of opaque, chalky look to them. Whereas with a veneer, we have techniques now where we can bond that ceramic directly to the tooth. There's no metal wow. in there. What provides the strength is the underlying tooth, and the porcelain is just layered right over that now, so I, it gives a really natural translucence i know mitch is probably too embarrassed to ask so i will ask for <laughs> okay him. okay this i know he's dying to know <laughs> could you give mitch vampire teeth well i'm sure you've had that question absolutely. before absolutely absolutely yeah i'm in With a little <laughs> a little red tip on it maybe i like it yeah. i like it what, at what age is too young or what's an appropriate age if someone's a teenager and they've got something about their smile they, they're not happy with or uh, being kid at school about it, do you need to wait till you're in your 20s when your mouth is fully formed, or what do you recommend? Yeah, that's a good question. And in the past, when we were doing crowns, that was that was a big consideration because young permanent teeth have a very large pulp chamber, and you don't want to do anything to damage that. And so, you know, putting caps on was something you'd wait till later on. A veneer or something like that, which just bonds to the outside, much more conservative. So that could really happen pretty much at any age. So some somebody, a, a teenager, say, that has teeth that came in that were modeled because of maybe medications they took when they were young, mm -hmm. something like that, and they're embarrassed about that, you know, you can go ahead at, a, at teenagers and do something like that, no problem. And I'm guessing insurance probably is not a big help with veneers. You know... In most insurance companies really don't care what color your teeth. If they're green, <laughs> right. if they're blue, right. they work, as long as they, they don't have head? cavities, right. we're not paying for it. Yeah, okay. that's pretty much how it goes. But know? other procedures like crowns, obviously insurance helps. I have two crowns, and I was so impressed at your office because one of the problems I had when I, and I think a lot of people have, when you get your crowns, first, the procedure is not a lot of fun. The, the wax, whatever they put in your mouth to make the imprint, and then they yep. send that off to a lab, and then they grind your tooth down and put a temp on, and my temporary fell off twice over a weekend. Yep. And it's not a really good feeling to have that little shred of tooth back there. You drink something cold, and it's, ah! But in your office, <laughs> you can get a crown all in the same visit. That's right. And explain how that's possible. That's right. Okay. So this is a digital age. This is digital dentistry. Basically, instead of taking a um, gooey impression in your mouth, we use a, a digital camera that captures the, a picture of the tooth, a digital picture of the tooth, puts it into the computer. So we have a digital model now instead of a plaster model. And on that model, we design the tooth and then send that information to a milling machine that's in our office. It actually mills out that crown or on layer, whatever, wow. 
right in the office it's while amazing. you're waiting there. It takes about seven or eight minutes to Jeez. mill that out. Then we bring it back and bond it on. You know, it's not doesn't take much longer than making a temporary, but wow. now you've got the real deal in there. Good to go. Fantastic. It probably won't be long until they're just 3D printing it. Oh, you're, I'm sure you're I mean, right. That's, that's close. Sure, we'll just have some drive-through probably. <laughs> just so you have questions. Scan it at one window and get the crown at the next. I like it. If you have questions about cosmetic dentistry, Dr. Robert Stafford is your man. Uh, the website is staffordsmiles.net. That's very important, .net. It's not .com. It's Stafford Smiles, S-T-A-F-F-O-R-D, smiles.net. You can get all kinds of information about bridges and smile design dental bonding, teeth whitening, porcelain veneers, anything you might want to know about cosmetic dentistry. And you'll be joining us uh, once a month on our show, and we're very excited about it. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much. More with Dari Mitch and Ted coming up.